Hello and welcome back to another video. Today's Wednesday, so this is Waffle on a Wednesday where I answer your questions to the best of my ability. And for those of you that are new here, my name's Mel and I live full time in this Mercedes Sprinter camper van and I make videos all about my experiences building and living in my Mercedes Sprinter camper van. And occasionally I get to go treasure hunting with my metal detector as well. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now I'd like to start off this week by talking about the video I made earlier on in the week concerning my nighttime diesel heater fuel pump. I did a little upgrade and if you haven't seen that video I'll put a link to it up there. Now I had an unprecedented amount of comments on that video and a majority of those comments were suggesting why don't I put my fuel pump up underneath my van? Why don't I put my fuel pump in a box to try and deaden the sound? So I kind of take it quite a few people missed the whole point of the video. The point of that video was to demonstrate or to help people make a more informed decision on whether or not it's worth spending 25 to 30 quid on an upgraded fuel pump. That was the whole point of that video because there are a lot of videos on YouTube saying that this fuel pump is magic, it's brilliant, it's the best thing since sliced bread. So I just wanted to make a more realistic video, if that makes sense. I hope that's cleared that up but then I must say it did actually make a very slight difference and I did actually manage to fall asleep with my diesel heater running for the very first time the other night. Now I really must apologise to everyone out there that was really excited and looking forward to me going to Western Supermare and doing some metal detecting on the beach. Unfortunately we just haven't had the weather. I was actually planning to go today but again it started to rain and they got a big weather front coming in again so I thought there's no way I'm going to get to Western Supermare. I may as well make this video seeing as though it's raining. But I promise all you metal detecting treasure hunting fans out there I will try and get to do some metal detecting very soon as soon as there's a break in the weather right now we've cleared all that up let's answer some of your questions right let's start with a quick question because we love a quick question and this comes from tyrone amos great videos mel thumbs up thank you tyrone just a quick question the gas safe bottle is filled with lpg what gas is that which hob is used as only see propane or butane? A bit confused. Keep up the good work. T.Y. Well, Tyrone, that's a really good question. And I can understand where that can become confusing. LPG actually stands for liquid petroleum gas. And it is, in fact, a mixture of propane and butane. And it was designed to be used in gasoline engines. And that's why it's available at petrol stations. And the good thing is, because it is a mixture of propane and butane, you can actually use it on pretty much all of your camping appliances, including barbecues. As long as, of course, it's all connected up properly and it's all done in a safe manner. I do hope that clears that up and thanks for the great quick question. So here's an interesting question from Andrew Robinson. Hey Mel, this isn't van related, but I was watching one of your old vids when you were fit in your fridge and your guitar kept coming into focus as I am a keen guitar player do you play guitar and what sort of music do you play yes Andrew I do play guitar my music taste is very very varied I play all sorts of stuff I used to play quite regular at open mic nights in and around Rochester but due to the pandemic obviously that all stopped so I haven't been out playing my guitar for a good couple of years so I'm a little bit out of practice but now things are starting to open up again I may get the guitar down dust off the dust and start practicing and getting back into it now I have posted a video on my YouTube channel of me singing a Christmas song quite a popular Christmas song in fact but I only posted it to members of my channel so if you want to see my Christmas ditty you'll have to become a member whether or not it's worth the three pound well I'll let you decide that but bear in mind becoming a member of my channel you get to see my videos early and you get to see them with no adverts so I think that's really worth the three quid if not only to see me sing my Christmas song Thanks for the great question and if you do decide to become a member of my channel I really do appreciate your support so thank you Hi Mel, just a quick question, laugh out loud. Have you thought about dusting off the Class 1 licence for a few days work a week? I say this because demand is high and the money is better than ever for drivers. I, 
I was just thinking about the Australian trip you have planned or you mention. You may be able to fast track it that way. Ta Paul. That comes from Paul Burgess. Well, Paul, you're absolutely right. I do have an HGV Class 1 driving license and it is current and up to date. And I do keep toying with the idea of getting a little part time job just working weekends but it would mean I'd be working for an agency and in my experience working for a driving agency the money isn't really that good at all but it's definitely something I've been thinking about doing but it will mean having less time to make these YouTube videos I'm thinking about it I've seriously been thinking about going back to work because YouTube doesn't pay a great deal of money but luckily my overheads are really low after all I don't pay no rent and I don't pay any mortgage so I can actually afford to live just about off of my YouTube income but having a little bit of extra money from working weekends would really come in handy so basically, yeah, I'm thinking about going back to work, but it would be only part time. Another top video. Does your kettle bang against your van door when you're driving? I noticed it moving about. Hope to see you here in Aussie one day. Love your channel. Very helpful. Well, that comes from PH Brand. Well, thank you, PH Brand. That's very kind of you. Yes, my kettle used to bang terribly against my door when I'm driving. But now it just makes a little gentle thud because I've put some soft pads up here on the actual door so when it bangs it hits these pads and it doesn't make such a that sort of sound because <laughs> it was quite annoying but usually when I drive before I got the hook there I used to get my kettle and put it in the sink that way it stopped it rolling around and falling about everywhere <laughs> great question and well spotted <laughs> lots of safety tips in this one Melly Mel nice one I do have a question, what's your opinion on charging a LiPo auxiliary battery using a 30 amp DC to DC charger with an old school 50 amp alternator feeding the main battery? Sorry to call it an auxiliary battery, leisure battery sounds a little camp, <laughs> laugh out loud. And that comes from Ant-Man. Well Ant-Man, as long as your DC to DC charge controller has LiPo 4 capabilities, some of them have a little switch, some of them are self-sensing, then yeah, it should be perfectly fine using a 50 amp alternator. Although it may take a little while to charge those batteries up, it will get there eventually. So yeah, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so let's lighten the mood now. I think it's time for Troll of the Week. Troll of the Week. Now this week's award of Troll of the Week goes to somebody quite special. And going by their previous comments over the last few weeks, I do believe they've been trying to get awarded Troll of the Week. So I'd like to say congratulations to David1. You are this week's Troll of the Week. And David left a comment on my silent diesel heater pump video that I made this week. I'll just read it out. Not a negative comment, but watching paint dry springs to mind, smiley face. Now see David, it's the smiley face that gives it away that you're not being malicious. So I really appreciate that. Now David goes on to ask a question, which so many other people ask as well. Did you think it was worth the 30 quid mill? Yes, absolutely. I think it was definitely worth me paying 30 pound for that pump purely so that I could make that video for your entertainment. So thank you for the comments and thank you for all the past comments you've made, David. Enjoy your moment. <laughs> now this next question comes from Kyle. Hi Mel, I watch you because of your honesty. Well, thank you, Kyle. Showing us when it goes right and when it goes wrong. And your humour. A quick question. We love a quick question. Can you tell us how and why you're, you started on YouTube? I have had my channel for three years and to be honest, it's done nothing. Frustrating at times. Thank you, Carl, at Sierra Survival and Van Life. To answer that question, I actually started my YouTube channel purely by chance. And a very good friend of mine, who I like to call Camper Van Jim, suggested that I start making videos about building camper vans. He said to me, you're a funny bugger, you should make videos as well. So I did, and here I am. <laughs> and it has been a really long road. But I have to say, if you start out making YouTube videos for the notoriety and for the money, then you're onto a loser straight away. You've really got to start making videos purely for the fun of it and enjoy the experience. 
is more of a, a marathon than a sprint. I think that's probably the best analogy that I can come up with. I do it because I enjoy it and getting money for it is really a byproduct. But thanks to the pandemic, or well, not really thanks to the pandemic, I shouldn't really say that, um, but due to the pandemic, I should say, I've actually had to rely on the income from YouTube. So I really do appreciate everybody that watches my videos, everyone that comments, and especially I appreciate all of the members of my channel because without the support of the members of my channel, there's no way I could actually do this full time. So once again, thank you to all the members of my channel. I really do appreciate your support. Thank you. Now I'm going to read out this next comment purely for the ego trip and it comes from Glyn Atmore. Hi Mel, you could have your own TV show and be the new Jack Hargreaves. Hargreaves? Jack Hargreaves, sorry. Out of town with Mel and his van. This would suit you perfectly Mel. Well thank you Glyn, your encouragement and your support is really appreciated. Thank you. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video as much as Glyn did, then please do give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra for now.